Hey y'all, I Rick Sky here, and a lot of you have asked me, I want to go to the Caribbean, should I stay in a Caribbean resort, or should I stay in a Caribbean vacation rental? So I'm going to break it down in hopefully as simplistic of a way as possible, but if you have any questions or comments, feel free to comment below, and I'll try, I'll try my best to respond to all of those. So considering cost, let's say you're a cost-conscious traveler, you're probably going to get a lot better deal with a, uh, with a vacation rental. Now, if cost is of no issue, should you stay in a resort? You know, money may not matter to you. Well, why don't I just stay in a resort? You know, money doesn't matter. Is the resort really a better option? So from experience, I can tell you that, uh, you know, that I've been around the globe. I've been in you know, insert big chain here, Four Seasons, Weston, et cetera, et cetera, in a previous business realm. And those are nice experiences, but are they really? You stay in a super expensive resort, you know, you get your, you get your sheets changed every day, you've got a very nice pool, you've got very nice grounds, you probably got a restaurant or two on site, but what you don't have is privacy. And, you know, putting... You know, setting cost aside, what you don't have is privacy. You got a lot of other people there. It's just like a big hotel. I mean, it's a resort. It's like an apartment complex. There's tons of people there. And if that's what you're craving, you know, maybe you're single and maybe you want to get out and, and be wild and mingle, you know. If that's the case, then a resort may be for you because you're going to be right there. You know, you have all these available ladies at the pool and you can have a good time. But as far as value is concerned and as far as overall experience is concerned, I can tell you that, uh, that vacation rental is the way to go. Now, as a rule of thumb, what I always do, and you can expand this video's description and then click the link there for more information, but what I always do is I go to a popular travel site and then I sort price low to high in the destination that I'm going to go to. And of those that are the lowest price, I look at the ones that have the most reviews and I read the reviews. You know, are they overwhelmingly negative? Are they overwhelmingly positive? Maybe they're overwhelmingly positive, but maybe there's something that one person said that's a deal breaker for me. You know, for example, when I travel, I've got to have a grill, preferably charcoal, but I mean, gas will do. I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna turn down an Austin vacation rental just because it's got gas instead of charcoal. But a grill or no grill is a, uh, is a deal breaker for me. Also, got to have internet. I mean, I'm not on the internet. I'm an adventure traveler. I Arts Guys Adventure Channel. So I'm out in the field. But when I capture all that content in the field, I want to be able to upload it to the internet. So internet's important. Also, air conditioning. Got to keep in mind, a lot of Caribbean vacation rentals, especially the lower priced ones, and typically I try to stick when I do a vacation rental, I try to stick between the $100, $100 US dollars per night up to, I try to keep it under $180 US dollars a night. I'm a very thrifty traveler, but with that said, I've had great experiences with all of my, with all of my vacation rentals. So yeah, sort low to high, see if there's any red flags that would make a place undesirable for you. I mean, we've all got our own personal preferences and needs. So, you know, do that, and then that can help you weed out the, the duds from the other. The other thing is, is that these islands are small. And when you're looking at the, at the lower-priced vacation rentals, they're going to be in high demand more than likely. So, you know, try to plan out in advance. Typically, when I'm, when I'm, booking, a, uh, when I'm booking a vacation rental, I plan out, you know, anywhere from eight to maybe 13, 14 months, because I want to be sure that I'm getting what I want. And be sure that, you know, if you go the vacation rental route, see where it is on that Caribbean island. And if you're looking for suggestions, check out my Caribbean videos playlist. I've got them from all over St. John, St. Thomas, uh, St. Martin, St. Bart's, Anguilla, Turks and Caicos, St. Kitts, Nevis, Bermuda. Bermuda's not technically the Caribbean, but I guess it kind of is all over the place. So if you want to see where, you know, where I've chosen to stay, you can find it all there. You know, and again, check the link within this video's description. I feel that I put together a very nice write-up 
uh, that may help everyone. Oh, and Peter Island, I've stayed there. Now, Peter Island, that was definitely a resort experience, super duper nice, but it was one of those experiences where even though it was a resort, I liked it because it was a little private island, and that was the only resort on the island. So you didn't feel like, you know, you're, you're getting the commercialized resort experience, you know, tons of, tons of resorts side by side on the beach and, uh, you know, just getting the cookie cutter vacation experience. No, no, it was, it was really cool. So that's an exception. Another exception for me for resorts, as far as resorts are concerned, and I consider this, I guess, more of a boutique hotel versus resort, but La Village or La Village in French, it's spelled like L-E Village, La Village in St. Bart's is a super duper boutique hotel. I highly recommend it. Check out my videos. And again, I'm a budget traveler, so I booked it far in advance and I got the cheapest room possible, but it didn't matter because all of us that chose to stay at that boutique hotel, we had the same pool. So who cares what your room's like? You know, for me, I'm just going in the room to sleep. I don't care. I'm staying by the pool. So I'm getting my good deal. I got a very good deal at La Village in St. Bart's. And, you know, I highly recommend that. Another place in Anguilla is called the, uh, and off the top of my head, I think it's the Great House. Just a very old, uh, very simple hotel resort type thing. They got a pool, they got a beach bar, nothing fancy, but it's cheap and it's nice. And it's on one of the best beaches. One of the, and Anguilla's got a ton of beautiful beaches, but it's on Rendezvous, Rendezvous Bay. So you can see St. Martin in the distance. It's really cool. That's another, that's another exception to my rule of, of travel. You know, again, I'm a, I'm a vacation rental kind of guy, but you know, those two resorts, they're, they're exceptions. Now, uh, something that's really cool is, uh, you know, once you've found those things to consider, take into consideration where you're located on the island. Now, a lot of times these islands are super small, so it doesn't matter. Now, there are some exceptions, uh, such as when I rented a vacation rental in Rum Point in Grand Cayman. Rum Point was great. I preferred, uh, I preferred Rum Point over Seven Mile Beach, which is arguably the, the if, you, if you say Cayman Islands, people say Seven Mile Beach. I mean, that's where your big chains are, your Westin, your, uh, let's see, what all they have there? They got Westin, they got uh, da, 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 all the big chains. I mean, I, I could just rattle them off, but it's just a, it's like a really nice beach seven mile beach and it's got all the you know all the top uh top tier hotels and resorts but i chose to say at rum point now in the case of cayman rum point is kind of at the northern part of the island and because of the because of the infrastructure on on uh on grand cayman it's quite a haul to get from rum point to anywhere else eastern side of the island is sparsely populated the southern side until you get to georgetown is sparsely populated and then, uh, and then Seven Mile Beach is over there. So if you're staying on Grand Cayman, it's a different animal. You know, it's not like a St. Kitts or a St. Thomas or a St. John where you can simply hop in your car and be at most any beach within a few minutes. So Grand Cayman, but the good thing was is that Rum Point's where we wanted to be. It was a great beach. It was just a short boat ride from Stingray City. And we did go into town a few days. We went to Georgetown, did some shopping. That's where the cruise ships come in. And we went to uh, Seven Mile Beach and spent a few hours out there. You know, we took our own cooler to be cheap and, and uh, cost conscious. But, you know, we enjoyed the same beach that those people that were spending five, six, seven hundred dollars a night for a hotel were spending. And, you know, we were only spending a little bit over a hundred U.S. a night for our very nice house with grill and pool and, and private beach at, uh, at Rum Point. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of things like that to consider and, and, a, and something that deters a lot of people especially if you've never been to the Caribbean before. So let's say, for example, you're from the United States and you're watching this, you're probably used to kind of the cookie cutter uh, lifestyle. You got fast food chains on every corner. You got, you know, big, large uh, retailers. Pretty much everything you need, you can go in a store and get it. Caribbean's a little bit different. If you've never been there, it's kind of like a step back into the past, which I think is a good thing. You know, you don't have all the junk food. You don't have the fast food. I think on Grand Cayman, unless they've changed, I think they may have had like one Burger King and like maybe one other, one or two other fast food restaurants. And St. St. Thomas is the same way. And I think, I don't even know if there's any fast food on St. John. And to me, that's wonderful. You know, I like to eat and I like to eat some junk sometimes, but 
you know, when you're in the Caribbean, it's just a different thing. You know, I'm there, I'm there for the beach, I'm there for the adventure, and ultimately all that my place where I stay is is a place to sleep. Something you may want to consider, and this is something I've started doing recently when I do vacation rentals, I make sure that it has a pool. Now, sure, I charge a little. It typically makes the price a little bit more if the vacation rental has a pool, but those few extra bucks a night may make it worthwhile, and it's still a heck of a lot cheaper than a resort. So, again, I'm not bashing resorts. Like I said, I love La Village on St. Bart's. I like uh, the Great House on Anguilla. I mean, those are nice, but preferably, you know, with those being the exception, everything else I'm going to do is going to be vacation rental, and that's because I like my privacy. I like the nice place. I mean, there's some places, I mean, check out my videos on my YouTube channel, this channel where you're watching this. If you haven't subscribed already, youtube.com forward slash iRicksGuy. Check out all my video playlists from various Caribbean islands, and you can see the awesome views, the awesome places where I've stayed, and it's like, God, that looks, that looks incredible. <laughs> and to think that I've done that for a little bit over $100 US dollars per night. I mean, sure, there's a going and a coming. You got to get the airfare. You got to get the rental car. Speaking of rental car, when you're on the Caribbean islands, I highly recommend sticking with the local rental car outfits because the big chains, they're just, they're crummy on the islands. I don't care if you've got, you know, corporate discount or whatever because you've rented cars through whatever company you might work for for many years and no, forget about that. Rent with the local place. Good example of that. I think it was called Scooter Bob's in Providentialis in Turks and Caicos. Our rental car broke down and we were at a marina. We got rained out. We were going to go out on this uh, deep sea fishing trip, but we got rained out and then our car wouldn't start. Within 10 minutes, Scooter Bob's from Providentialis in Turks and Caicos was at the marina with a new car. They're like, here, here, sir, take the keys. Gave us the keys to a replacement vehicle, took the keys to that vehicle. They sorted out the problem, I guess. You know, we volunteered to stick around, but they had it covered. You know, we were the customer. The customer's always right. That was first-class service, and that's the type of service you'll probably only get from a local car rental outfit. And the prices are typically better. So, you know, so many things to consider. And, and again, if you're, if you're watching this, you probably got, you know, maybe you're married, maybe you're not, you got your wife over there and she's like, well, I don't know about going to the, I don't know about going to the Caribbean. We've never been. It could be dangerous. You know, we're renting something. We don't know what's around. It could be dangerous. That's the other thing you got to think about. And I will tell you, there's crime everywhere, but, you know, been in the United States, been in Mexico, been in Canada, and then going to the Caribbean. The Caribbean, you just got to be smart. It's safe. I mean, don't be an idiot. You know, if you're, if you're there, don't be hanging out in a, in a, let's say, a cruise ship shopping area after all the shops are closed down for the day. You know, don't make yourself a target. Don't make yourself look like a tourist. I mean, just exercise common sense. And, and it's, it's a very nice place. I haven't been to a single Caribbean island where I felt, well, I take that back. And this is, not, uh, this is not saying anything negative about Jamaica, but Jamaica is the only place where I felt unsafe. And the only reason is, is that we were staying in the grill. And actually this was a resort, it wasn't a vacation rental. Staying in the grill and just in a shopping area, just a short walking distance from there. And one of the people that was actually staying in the same place we were staying was stabbed, just a random act of violence. And that can happen anywhere, but Again, for that reason, just because it hits so close to me, I felt a little bit unsafe. Now, the same things happened in New York. I was getting off of the subway in New York, in Manhattan, and somebody was knifed and killed, and it was in the New York Times the next day. So that was, uh, that was tragic as well. So, I mean, you know, crime can happen anywhere. So if you're basing your decision to stay in a resort or to stay in a vacation rental purely because of Ooh, it might be dangerous. Again, think about where you're staying. Sure, if you're doing a vacation rental and it's out by itself, and uh, you know it could, you know, re do your due diligence, research the area. You know, if you're getting something that's really cheap and it's out in the middle of nowhere, you could potentially become a target. So you know, be aware of that and be aware of what you take. I mean, you know, don't uh, when you're in the Caribbean. I mean, just take a 
you know, don't take your jewelry or anything like that. Just, just take a, uh, just a, a, just a casual set of clothes and, you know, maybe a, you know, a nice collared shirt and, and some fancy flip flops to, to wear to dinner. I mean, it's a very laid back place and it's a lot of fun, but again, I recommend, and I strongly recommend a vacation rental in the Caribbean over a resort or a hotel with the exceptions being La Village on St. Bart's, the Great House on Anguilla. And even when I was in Bermuda, I did a, uh, I did a vacation rental there in St. George's on Bermuda's East End, and it was super nice. Even had a, um, had a Viking stove in the vacation rental, so did a lot of good uh, seafood and all that while I was there. So tell me what you think within the comments below. Uh, any questions you have, feel free to ask them. Again, expand this video's description and then click the link there to find more details. I've shared links to the various places I've talked about. And, and I, again, I'm in the Caribbean a ton. So if there's any questions you have, feel free to ask. And I'm here to help if I can. It's a very enjoyable experience. It's even more enjoyable when you can, when you can go, when you can experience all the activities during the day. And what I like to do is pay for it all up front. So when I go to the Caribbean, I've got, I've paid for everything. Again, because I'm paying, I'm, I'm staying on the cheap. You know, I'm staying between the 100 to $200 U.S. mark per night. So I'm staying on the cheap. And, and that's something else. That's going to segue into some other videos. I'm going to talk about how to eat cheap in the Caribbean, how to drink cheap in the Caribbean, and any other questions that you may have about the Caribbean. I'm going to turn those into Caribbean how-to, Caribbean tutorial videos. So I'm going to flesh this out. And hopefully it'll be a lot of fun. I like filming videos. I like sharing uh, how-to information, so I hope you enjoy it. If you found this video to be of value, be sure to like it, share this video, subscribe to my channel, and stay, oh, and ring that bell icon when you do to be notified whenever I post another video. And stay tuned, because I'll be posting a lot more Caribbean videos soon. Thanks for your viewership, and y'all have a good day.